is the only way to watch television. If you're watching it. Honey, I've seen it before. It's a rerun. Well, why don't you turn it on? I was hoping it would turn out better this time. Must be getting past your bedtime. We can't stay here and talk all night. Who wants to talk? Answer it and I'll scream. Hey, Miss Burke speaking. Hey, Miss. I'm at 5th and Central. I... I want to report a murder. Whose? My own. I'm sorry, honey. Let me know how it ends. But Amos! would end up this way. But it didn't happen in the immediate vicinity. Didn't it? There's a great deal of blood on the car seat and on the floor, on the driver's side. All right, we'll assume he drove down here. Why would a man as wealthy as Madison Cooper be in this crummy part of town? Well, I've thought of various possibilities, but uh, I haven't been able to come up with a good reason. You haven't a reason? No, sir. Detective Gilson, I have trained you personally, schooled you in the art of deduction, the application of logic, how to draw specific conclusions. You stand there and tell me that you don't have a reason? I'm sorry, sir. Sir? Yes, what is it? Why do you think Madison Cooper came down here? I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> Me. What do you want from me? My life. My life, right? Here, come on, take my life. That's what you want. I'm here. Take... Hey, this is a nice office. Hey, this is really a nice, this is, you know, nice. You know what I mean? Nice. Furnishings are nice. The rug is terrific. Nice. Everything's nice. Most of the other offices in this building, like the uh, cells and things, they're not nice, but this is a nice office. Wally. Yeah. We were just asking some questions. Now, don't get excited this time. Oh, that's, that's, that's what I was waiting for. Reassurance. <laughs> I'm a half a step away from the electric chair, and he says, don't get excited. No, oh, no, I won't get excited. That's exactly what I was waiting for. Oh, come on. Yeah. 
We need a few things clarified. A few things? A few things? Captain, I've told you everything about me since I was six years old. What? We need a few answers. Okay, I'll, start, I'll start from the very beginning, the beginning, okay? I was born. Then, uh, there was a lot of trouble. What time do you usually deliver your last papers? About 9.30. P.M.? You have to remember P.M.? We didn't see you until a few minutes after 10. I was late. I, I, I had a flat tire. Oh, that's a felony, right? I'm sorry. It's a felony. Where did you have the flat? On my left rear wheel. That's where I got the flat tire. <laughs> I mean, in what vicinity? In the vicinity of my right rear wheel. That's where I got it. On what street did it happen? On Olive, just past Jefferson, Captain. Let me just ask you one question. Just one question. How long have you been buying papers for me? Maybe 12 years, huh? Well, don't our friendship mean nothing to you no more? You're like a brother to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> but what makes you think that somebody would put $30,000 in your news rack? And how do I know? Wally. Well, look, look. He's got no change, so he takes a paper and he leaves thirty thousand dollars. How do I know? We need no levity. We need no levity. I'll tell you, you don't. I'll tell you what I need. I need a lawyer. That's what I need. And, and you just gave me a good idea, a lawyer. I'll get uh, uh, Irving Levity. That's right, Irving Levity. I'll get him. Wally. No, I got a better idea. This is big. I can change my mind. This is a big thing. This is much too big for. I'll get this is big. This is big. Get me yet, uh, Madison Cooper. Madison Cooper? Huh? I'm afraid he's unavailable. Which reminds me. Madison Cooper defended your father in court once, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he represented my father in court, all right. <laughs> Boy, did he defend my father. I'll tell you how he defended my father. <laughs> he went to the preliminary hearing with Pop. That's how he defended my father. <laughs> right after that, he uh, took on some big Hollywood divorce case and left my father, right, with some other lawyer. I was just a kid at that trial, but I remember like it was ten minutes ago. <laughs> when that lawyer talked to that jury, blah, he wasn't very good. I began losing confidence in him when the jury filed out and left the door open. <laughs> they, they, they were back in about 41 seconds, phew, before I could even... <laughs> well, did they uh, find your father guilty? Yeah, they gave Pop big casino life, which turned out to be six years, so it doesn't matter. Was he paroled? Well, kind of. Uh, Pop became the chaplain's clerk, you know, he led the hymns, all that. <laughs> You see, my father never did nothing halfway. Everything he did was, you know, all out, his whole self. Like the day in the, in the, in the chapel, they were singing um, uh, Rock of Ages. So my father, you know, he booms out. Rock of, you know, drops dead on ages. All out. Uh, Wally, uh, send some flowers. Well, up to Quentin. Well, the department would like to remember your dad. He was such a good customer. Thank you very much, Captain. Thank you very much. That's very nice. You're, 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 you're a very nice man, Captain. You really are. I mean, you're just you know, nice. You know what I mean? They're, they're entire nice. But like I said, the rugs are nice and the, the furniture's nice. Even you're nice. You're, very, you're a very nice man. <laughs> Cooper had a pretty fancy house. Mr. Cooper was a pretty fancy attorney. Now, what are you doing here? Captain, if I'd stayed down on Fifth Street, where would you have sent me? Here. Well? Anyone in the house when you got here? Butler and a maid asleep upstairs. All right, let's have a look around. Uh, it's a little shack with the railroad tracks, five bedrooms, eight baths, servants' quarters. Madison Cooper, the barefoot boy from Bel Air. Yeah, I found a blood stain on the windowsill. He must have been stabbed here. Now look at the carpet. More stains. Yeah. His attention had to be diverted. He was either looking out the window. When he turned, he was suddenly stabbed. Or well, he walked over here for a reason. What reason? Remember Charlie Chan? Yeah. When you see picture, look behind. Look behind picture. Nice shot, Captain. What else did you find? Yeah, I found these over on the table. Four transcripts of some old Cooper cases. 
Get a look. It's a passage here. Circle and pencil. Well, things are improving. Our dear friend Wally. Cooper refers to him here. Uh, I tried to persuade Wally that I had to withdraw from his father's case. I didn't want him to feel that I was motivated by only money. He became angry and bitter. Well, this just about confirms our theory on Wally. Just about as 20 miles away. Captain, which side are you on? The one with all the right answers. Tim, you and Les had better take the transcripts back to the office and go over them. If Cooper was working on them when he was killed, it could provide us with a group of suspects. Yes, sir. I'm going to Cooper's office. Oh, Les, uh, guard those books with your life. Right. And if it should ever become a choice between you and those books... I know. The books come first. You had a credit to the organization. you to clean it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were the janitor. Well, if you need any little chores done, I'd be... Uh... Who are you? I'm Captain Burt, police department. May I ask what you're doing here? Why don't you invite me in and ask? I'm really very busy. So am I. But I just can't resist your invitation. You going somewhere? Look, why don't you come back during office hours and ask Mr. Cooper? Hmm? I'm afraid Mr. Cooper won't be able to help me. He's dead. Dead? But just this morning, he's... That was this morning. I'd like the name and address of his secretary. I'm sorry, the personnel files are locked. How about that phone? Is it locked, too? I want to make a call. Thank you. You're very efficient. Thank you. Captain Buck, I want to speak to Timothy Tilson. You wouldn't happen to be his private secretary. I'm his law clerk. At this hour? I was asked to stay late tonight to pack up some of Mr. Cooper's private papers. You're very friendly. I'm the friendly type. Hello, Tim. I've been over the four hour transcripts. And? Well, it looks like four good suspects. Some of them go pretty far back. Do you remember Elliot Dunning, the movie star? Elliot Dunning? Nothing goes back that far. Well, one of the transcripts covers Cooper's defense of Dunning. A 17-year-old uh, girl named Amy Booth accused Dunning of... Fathering her child. That's right. Did you know her, Captain? Not at all, but the case is getting interesting. I'd appreciate your telling me everything you know about Mr. Cooper. <sighs> I know it's very late and I still haven't finished packing Mr. Cooper's private documents. Don't. But I just told you, I have I know to. what you just told me. Nothing leaves this office until we go over it. Well, I really think Mr. Cooper would want me to. I think Mr. Cooper would want us to find out who killed him. Oh. Well, in that case, I'll take my things and go home. You don't seem to remember. Nothing leaves this office. Oh. Except us. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a date. We're going to headquarters. Look, why don't you try your couch out on your own secretary? This official business. Is it really? And do you also give trading stamps? I have a feeling you don't trust me. <laughs> Not on your life. You or any other man. Not until I get a certain little piece of jewelry. I think I can do better than that. Really? Oh. How would that do? Do you always shave when you arrest people? I'm sorry. Me too. Why? You can't cut your throat with an electric shaver. No, no, just because I asked you to come down to headquarters. Demanded would be a better word? Invited would be a better word. I never accept invitations from strange men. I wouldn't say we're strangers. I haven't been to bed since yesterday. Don't you ever sleep? Only with my eyes open. I can believe that. Checked out the address where Mr. Cooper was having his documents and papers sent. Small storage company on Santee Street. 
Now, why do you think he was having him sent there? I got an idea. Go ahead. Maybe he wanted them sent there because he wanted to, uh... To what? To store them. You know, answers like that are really going to take you places. Where? To the lady section of the county jail. I thought you said I wasn't under arrest. You're not, but you're encouraging me. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. I uh, didn't think you were... Uh... Oh, we weren't. What is it, Tim? Well, I checked Dunning's address, and it's an old one, but I thought there might be a chance he still lives there. After all these years? Well, it was just a thought. It might turn out. Let's give it a twist. Captain, it, uh, it is getting rather late. We could always put in for overtime. Oh, Carol. Hmm? Yeah? Why don't you go home? Why don't I go home? Home? You keep sitting here, people are going to think you're a suspect. <laughs> Looks like something Rudolph Valentino would have owned. Oh, don't mention Valentino around Dunning. He hated himself without a woman. How'd you know that? HHLP. What is that, a research service? Mm -hmm. Had a hop and low on the Parsons. <laughs> Mr. Dunning? Charmed. We're detectives. Contemptible. May we come in? At this beastly hour? When a man has to earn a living, it'll only take a moment. Moments are precious. And precious are the moments that go to make up the days of our years. I said that in the voyage. Wasn't that a marvelous picture? I didn't see it. Good evening. Oh, there were lines around the theater. I couldn't get in. Come in. <laughs> it was a marvelous picture. And when I feel fair preacher of an hour that I may never look upon me more, Never have relish in the fairy power of unreflecting love. Then on the shore of this wide world I stand alone and think till love and fame to nothingness do sink. Won't you sit down? What can I do for you? Mr. Dunning, do you remember Madison Cooper? Faintly. He defended you in a paternity action. Of which I was acquitted. I was wondering how I could locate the Poor little defendant, Amy Booth. Amy Booth. The girl in the paternity case? You certainly haven't forgotten her name, have you? She said that you were the father of... I remember quite well what she said. Her sweet, innocent face. Those wide open eyes. Little hands. Fluttering like a bird. A vulture. At the trial, she told of how you made improper advances and how you lured her to your lair. It's a lie! Must I forever be vilified for simply having an innocent young girl in my house that rainy night so many years ago? It was late when I came in that dreadful evening. I closed the door, but there was still a chill in the air. My French windows were open. As I went to close them, I saw her. What's this? What's this? I broke in because I... You broke in because? Because I love you. Because you love me. They all do. They all do. Where do you live, my little thing? Hmm? Hmm? I'm... I'm an orphan. What? Well, now, you poor little angel. Now, let's see. We'll have to get you out of those clothes as quickly as we can. So that you won't catch your death. Hmm? So I had my housekeeper put her to bed. Half hour later and I was preparing for bed. Suddenly, I thought of something. And there it was. I knew she'd love it. Did I go into her room? Of course I did, but judge me not until I tell you why. You can't imagine how sweet she looked lying with my boyhood teddy bear.
teddy bear. That's what he said, Tim. A teddy bear. Dunning, I'd like to see you. Yes. Well, gentlemen, who's your roommate? An overbearing, boorish individual with whom I'd be ashamed to be buried in the same cemetery. Then why do you live with him? He is now the owner of this house and has permitted me to remain here as houseboy. What does he do? He used to be my stand-in, but he had a passion for investment. He diligently saved his salary and bought lot after lot of grubby little properties. Those properties are now a community. Community? They call it Beverly Hills. Nice sleep solve anything, Captain? Yeah, I'm insomnia. I just can't seem to get our matinee idol Dunning out of my mind. You think he could kill? Why not? He helped kill off the motion pictures. He had a motive. For killing the movie? For killing Madison Cooper. The case certainly destroyed his career. A cop, Captain Burke. Any report on the murder weapon yet? Good. What? About when? Thanks. What is it? Autopsy report states Cooper died of a punctured ventricle caused by a long, thin instrument. Killer should have been more patient. Why? Cooper was suffering from a fatal disease. He was close to the end when he was killed. Pretty ironic. Aren't they all? Keep working on the other names in the transcript. I'm going to see Amy Booth. The girl in the Dunning paternity case? That's right. Maybe she remembers him differently. Careful, Captain. Remember, she's a fallen woman. Oh, don't worry. I've stumbled a few times myself. I like looking out the window. This is my imagination window. That's a big city out there. Hollywood? Small city, really. I've spent most of my life looking at it through the window. You can think of so many wonderful things looking down from here. And it's so different. So different and artificial when you try to touch it. These are only paper, but please have one for luck. Thanks for the luck. I never get lonesome here. You see, my, my window is magical. It's like staring into an enormous looking glass. Is, uh, is that your only looking glass? I don't want any others. Why? I know what I look like. Oh, no. You're wrong, Amy. I feel ugly inside. The bitterness, the things I've thought every day, every hour for nearly 18 years. One summer day, I was 17, happy, glad to be alive. But after that night, when I awoke the next morning, I wasn't young anymore. I was old and ugly. I don't suppose it was easy for you to find work after the trial. Strangely enough, a lot of offers came my way. Acting jobs around town. Are you working now? Yes, I'm, I'm opening in a play next week. Earning money's never been too much of a problem. Amy, don't remember anymore. Try not to believe all the lies you've been telling yourself. of an ugly woman? I don't know. I don't know. Because you haven't really looked. Now, 
keep looking. How about some breakfast? What for? I'm told it's good for your body. You leave my body out of this. You'd look ridiculous without it. Does that mean you don't like my face? No, I didn't say that. I love it. I'll pick you up in ten minutes. What for? To feed your face. Oh. Look, mister, I own this place 21 years. And in 21 years, nobody ever come in and wants breakfast. I'm sorry. It was her idea. I realize it's a little unusual. Unusual? It's a little crazy. Hey. Where do you eat supper? All I want is two salami sandwiches, two cartons of milk. You can handle that. I want a pickle. And a pickle. And an onion. And an onion. Mashed. You heard the lady. Sit down. I'll fix it for you. Good luck to you, lady. Thank you. Carol. You knew most of Mr. Cooper's clients, didn't you? You just can't quit, can you? Quit what? Suspecting me. Oh, honey, I don't suspect you. You hate me. Honey, I don't hate you. You don't like me? I'll prove it. How? Just as soon as you finish your sandwich, I'll kiss you, onions and all. Oh, you're the most marvelous man I've ever known. Two milk, two sandwiches, two pickle, one onion, one mash, two glasses, two napkins. No wonder. You're in love. All people in love is nuts. He's playing our song. He's flipped. How much? Oh, he couldn't do that. No charge. Even for my worst enemy, no charge. Go ahead. Go ahead what? Tell me how much you love me. Later. Right now I'd like to find a Mrs. Lovey Harrington, a man named Arthur Shelby. Your boss was their lawyer. I don't know Arthur Shelby, but I do know Lovey Harrington. Do you know her address? Try the Continental Hotel. Carol, you've been very helpful, and I'm grateful. I really appreciate it. Enough to do me a big favor? Of course. A really big favor? Sure. Promise me. Give me some more onions. Help you, sir? Yes, I'm looking for Mrs. Lovey Harrington. Is she registered here? Oh, you could say that. Well, I just did. You can find her in the Red Roulette room. How will I recognize her? Uh, just follow the music. music, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, I do. Good. Won't you sit down, Mr. Uh... Burke Homicide? Sit down, Mr. Burke Homicide. How well did you know Madison Cooper? Oh, Madison was my attorney when my fifth husband somehow fell off of a very tall building. Well, there was a rumor that he uh, didn't fall that he was urged off the side of that building by a very strong push. Why, the very idea. The idea of it is that your husband was loaded with life insurance. What are you trying to prove? Just that people around you seem to have the disturbing way of evaporating. What do you mean? Let's take your sixth husband, Howard. I believe he developed pneumonia. Oh, dear, sweet Howard. He was such a kind little man. Madison Cooper said that he kept notes on you. 
and that he realized in the fourth day of the trial that you were guilty, but he uh, continued the case in spite of it. Madison was such a sweet, dear, adorable liar. Was he lying when he wrote that you sent him constant letters, that you proposed marriage? My dear Mr. Homicide, you seem to forget that I was already married to Howard. Who was about to play a very short engagement. It was such a nightmare. Those horrible detectives with their insinuations. Those newspaper headlines, I... Howard was late coming from work. I'll never forget. It was our first snow in ten years. I was really beginning to worry when I heard his key in the lock. Howard, darling! Huh. Oh. Oh, sweetheart, you'd better not kiss me. I think I've got a uh, cold. Oh, I'll pour you a nice hot tub. That's just what you need, a nice hot bath. Come along. <laughs> I could have died when dear Howard went. And you almost did, except that the judge didn't believe in capital punishment. Twenty years, isn't that what he gave you? Nineteen. I got one year off for good behavior. Congratulations. I imagine a person get very annoyed after nineteen years in prison. Annoyed enough to kill someone. Someone whom you felt responsible. And who might that someone be? Madison Cooper. Madison Cooper killed? How thoughtful of someone. I see you're stricken with grief. Stricken? I'd appreciate it if you stayed close by. I may want to see you later. <laughs> Don't worry. I live here. Here? Mm. The hotel. My husband owns it. Oh, but you will tell him to be careful. What do you mean? It's a tall building. had great confidence in you. Thanks, boss. That's why I'm sure you're going to be able to tell me what she's doing in there. She wanted to see you. Oh, she wanted to see me. Said it was important. She said it was important. She waited half the night. Oh, she did. I wanted her to be comfortable. Well, she is comfortable. What's the trouble? Good evening, Carol. How are you? Sleepy. I want you to go back to bed. Thanks, boss. Oh, that's a dandy idea. I don't think he's ever coming home. He's home. You're home. Yes, he's home. Mm. What are you doing here in my home? It was all your fault. What's all my fault? You and your old murder. My landlady read about it and she threw me out. She thinks I did it. Did anyone ever tell you you'd do wonders for silk pajamas? <sighs> I did not come here to model men's pajamas. I came here... Oh, dear. 
Well, don't just stand there. Get me a robe or something. We're fresh out of robes, ma'am. Look, I, I know this looks awfully bad. Oh, no, I think it looks good. Of course, I don't know what other people would think. Other people? What other people? Oh, no particular people, just other people. You mean because I'm in your old pajamas? They're 100% pure Chinese silk. They are 100% pure Japanese gunny sack. They itch. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. I should show you the rash on my skin. Yes, you should. You should live so long. Why don't you forget the robe? I'm going to forget the pajamas, too. Carol? Carol? Yes? Henry said you had something important to tell me. I did, but I've changed my mind. Here. What were you going to tell me? I found Arthur Shelby's address in some old files. What is it? I won't tell you. But Carol, uh, there's something important I forgot to tell you. What? This door won't lock. 117 Yale Street. I'll put Tim and Les on it right away. Oh? Who are Tim and Les? I like that better. Oh, uh... Tim and Les, they're two detectives I know who used to cover divorce cases. They take pictures of girls in sheets. Oh, ruin their reputations, huh? The girl? The sheets. Hmm? Mr. Shelby. Now, you say you were the head chemist of the Rollins Chemical Company? Uh, yes, I was, and until I was accused of selling chemicals to a rival company. Excuse me. And did you? Uh, yes. Why did you do that? Well, I'd heard rumors that my firm might be going bust, and so I needed funds to assure that I could finish my experiments. I, I put the money into the company's bank. In a company's name? Uh, no, into my own. It, it, to be used for scientific experiment, of course. <laughs> That's embezzlement and grand theft. Well, I suppose you could call it that, if you want it to be uh, technical, of course. <laughs> and unscientific? Mr. Shelby, you couldn't call it anything else. Well, you can call it that if it makes you any happier. <laughs> I never thought of myself as an embezzler. Rather, a, a, a scientist working for the betterment of mankind. Have you seen Castro? Castro! Have you seen... Ah! There he is, Fidelio! <laughs> ah, Fidel. <laughs> ah, little Castro. <laughs> You know, I call him Castro because I simply can't do a thing with him. <laughs> Mr. Shelby, you were defended by Madison Cooper, weren't you? Defended? I wouldn't say that. Defended, indeed. That is a jolly one. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, I shall never forget that day in court. Such a long, long while ago. Rollins Chemical Company was heavily insured, and I heard that the insurance companies were very interested in my trial. I saw Mr. Cooper talking to the lawyers from the insurance companies. I made a deal with the insurance people. If we change our plea to guilty, you'll get probation. Mr. Cooper, you're a fine lawyer, and I'm very happy to leave my fate in your most capable hands. If it pleases the court, my client, Arthur Shelby, would like to withdraw his plea of not guilty and enter a plea of guilty. He respectfully requests that sentence be passed at this time. Shelby, hmm? please step down and face the court. It is the judgment of this court that you be sentenced to 20 years in the state prison. wondered 
and I had the best part of 20 years to think about it, exactly how much Mr. Cooper was paid by the insurance companies for selling me out. And then only the night before last, he came here and offered me $40,000. Why did he do that? He said he owed it to me. I didn't touch it, of course. It was tainted money. He came by it dishonestly. But who needs money when, excuse me, when one has invented this? What is it? This is dehydrated that. What is that? Well, yeah, that is the liquid of this. <laughs> well, then what is this? Ah, this is a two-month supply of food. A man and his cat can live on this for eight weeks. Just in case you understand. Um, in case of what? Just in case someone presses the wrong button. <laughs> We've seen them all. Pick yourself a winner. Each one of them had a good reason to kill Cooper. Yeah. Lovey Harrington and Shelby went to jail. So did Wally's father. Dunning went to pot and Amy just ruined her life. Everybody got what was coming to them and nothing comes to me. Good afternoon, Captain. Entitled to your opinion. Don't tell me this is Clueless Friday. Well, uh, lab report on Cooper's car. Blood stains were his. Outside of that, the car was immaculate throughout, except on the driver's side. What about the driver's side? When they vacuumed, they came up with a couple of pieces of straw. Great. Very, very good. I'll build me a scarecrow. How about a theory, Timothy? Fresh out. Mind if I try one? Shoot. Thank you. Cooper knew he was dying of a fatal disease. That's why he offered Shelby the $40,000. To pay back Shelby for that sellout in court. And then he left the money for Wally. For the years his father spent in prison. And so his last night on Earth, Madison Cooper was trying to buy himself a seat in heaven. Ted, you have just won yourself a rose. Wait a minute. Shinto Garden. On second thought, I may retire undefeated. You said there was straw in that envelope. That's right. Sure. Straw feet. You mean a straw mattress. Oh, no, no. I mean straw feet. It all adds up. Straw, the weapon, everything. Come on. Or two. To pick up Madison Cooper's killer? <laughs> There's your straw, lass. Straw feet. You gotta get your mind off mattresses. Would you mind coming with me? I'll be right back. Don't take any wood again.
a lot of me. Why don't you tell me? I'll help you if I can, but you got to tell me everything. I went to his office one night. It was during the third week of the trial. I told him the trial was ruining my life, but I'd do almost anything to get it settled. All I asked for was enough money to leave town and start a new life. What happened? Mr. Cooper listened to me, and he turned around, and he shut the door right in my face. I wanted to die right then and there. I didn't learn until later that Elliot Dunning had given him permission to settle for $15,000, and Mr. Cooper had it in his power to do this. Cooper had to win. It didn't matter if he ran you out of this world to do it. I begged him 18 years ago not to destroy me, and he refused. And then last night, all of a sudden, he offered me money. $15,000. That's all my life had been worth. It's over, Amy. It's all over. He asked me to meet him after work. My ship was off at 11. And I went out and he was waiting. And we drove to his house. And he went to the safe to get the money. And I took this out of my hair and stabbed him. He turned around and looked at me. He tried to say something. He looked confused and puzzled. And then something happened. I, I'm not sure. I'll never be sure about it, but... But what? I... I felt sorry for him. Long night. Yeah, probably won't be another one like it till tomorrow night. Captain Burke. Oh, Captain. You know, I can't tell you how much I appreciated your letting me use your pajamas the other night. Well, you're entirely welcome. Get in the car. I never slept in such a comfortable bed in all my life. Well, I'm delighted. Get in the car. Up. <laughs> I thought I'd buy you something. Oh? Yes. Something personal. For me? Yes. They're blue silk pajamas. Pleasant dreams. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh. Did you really think so? <laughs> Hi, Fi. Hi, Captain. Would you like some music? Fine. Love to. 